the Nick collection from Google is now free. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I use some of their plugins in my landscape photography. So I had mixed feelings when I heard that the Nick collection was now going to be free. They were mixed because it wasn't that long ago, it was about a year ago that I paid a decent amount of money for all of their plugins, and now all you guys get this for free, so it's great for you, and eh, kind of sucky for me. But, uh, you know, I don't use the plugins all the time, but there are some applications that I really like using the Nick plugins for, and I wanted to show you some of those right now. Okay, so I have this photo here in Photoshop. I've did some very minor tweaks in Lightroom, brought it over into Photoshop. I wanted to show you some of the really cool things that you can do with the Nick, the Nick presets. So um, let's start off with the water. The water is very much lacking detail, um, partially because I used too long of a shutter speed, but um, partially just because, you know, it was flowing really fast and I want to be able to bring out some of that detail. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to go to the, over here, the, uh, uh, they give you this, this panel here that has all of your different, uh, Nick, Nick, uh, plugins. And I like to go to the output sharpener, the output sharpener pro and when you click on that, it creates a new layer and you get this. So by default, it comes looking about like this where it just adds a little bit of sharpening. But what I like to do is I like to add a little focus and then play with the structure and the local contrast. And I find that using one or the other gives me some nice detail in the water. And I like to play around with that. Typically I'm adding one and subtracting the other and uh, you can you just kind of have to play with it to see which one you're liking best. When you zoom in in an area, you can really see what it is that you're doing. And yeah, so I think I'm liking that. I'll hit OK. Now, when you do do these uh, adjustments, the whole trick is to do it locally. Don't do it to the entire image. You're just doing it locally. So by using it in Photoshop, it gives it to you on this layer here. And now. I can create a layer mask and I filled it with black and now I'm just going to paint in that effect where I liked what it was doing. So with my, just for the sake of this video, I'm going to work fast, use a 80% opacity brush and then just paint it in by painting white on my layer mask here and I'll paint in a little extra detail where I wanted it. I was a little bit more subtle than I probably could have been with this, but that's just a habit that I get into working subtly rather than working really heavy handed. So I'll paint in that effect. I like that. All right. Um, another one that I really like is color effects pro. It has all kinds of different things in it that I really, really like. Um, a couple of them I like a little bit more. The detail extractor is really good for bringing out detail and textures in the shadows. Um, so, Another one that I really like, where is it here? Let's go to um, tonal contrast. And by with the tonal contrast, you can really add contrast and bring out texture in different parts of the image. So if I turn it off and on, you can kind of see what it's doing. Uh, again, I'm going to be working on the water for this particular one. So I'm going to be adding contrast here. And then you have the different uh, types. I typically like balanced because it doesn't it doesn't block up your blacks quite as bad. And you can see all of that detail we're bringing out in the water. It looks kind of crappy out in uh, away from the water, but in the water I'm really liking what it's doing. So if I turn that off and on, you can see that. <clears throat> now the trick is to be, to use it locally. Don't apply it to the entire image. So again, it's going to give it to us in another layer. So once this is done here, it's going to give it to us in a layer. I'm going to create a layer mask and then I'm just going to paint that effect in where I want it. So I'm going to hold down alt, click on the layer mask button, and then that fills it with black. And now I'm just going to paint that effect in where I was liking what it was doing, which is mostly in this water here, 
the water over here. I was really liking it. It's just adding a little extra definition and, uh, and texture to that water. And which, I mean, that water is the entire story of this particular image. So uh, that's kind of the point. Let's try that. And then as we turn this off and on, you can see what that did. It even brought out a little bit of color in that particular part. Okay, so now um, I want to show you what the detail extractor does. So we're going to go back down to Color Effects Pro, click on that. And then we're going to go to Detail Extractor over here on our different, different, uh, I guess they would be effects. So let's find Detail Extractor right here. And what this is really good at is bringing out some of the texture and then boosting those shadows. So if overall, I don't like what it's doing everywhere, but I like where it's doing some of the places. Another thing you want to do is change, mess with the radius, see what's working best. Fine, medium, and large. I'm thinking I'm liking fine better in this case. And we're just going to hit OK. And now we're just going to subtly paint that into the darker areas of the image just to bring out some of the shadows. Basically, this is like almost like adding an HDR effect. It's really it's bringing down the highlights, boosting the shadows and ad adding a lot of uh, tonal contrast. So I'm going to hold down alt, create a layer mask. And now I'm just going to subtly more subtly than that paint it into the areas that I want to bring in just a little bit of detail. So areas like this, like that. I'm just subtly painting it in. Because if you do too much of this, it starts to look very HDR, kills the contrast of the image. So I'm just subtly painting it in in the areas that I want it and only using it in the areas I want it. Something like that. And we'll try it right there. Something like this. Okay, so one other thing that you can do that's kind of a cool effect uh, that I use fairly often is I like to add in a little bit of fog. This shot already has that kind of misty fog look, but I, I want to kind of emphasize that. And I'm going to show you how you can um, create a recipe is what they call it, where you can um, combine two different, two different effects. So here's the fog filter that you can add. It's got different styles. I'm going to go for the more contrasty style so it's not too crazy. Something like this. Now I'm also going to um, click on Add Filter over here on the right. And now I get to add another filter on top of that. So let's try Glamour Glow. And that's going to um, add even more glowy kind of uh, Gaussian blur to it. And Let's warm it up a little bit when we do it. Something like that. So we'll hit OK. And then again, we're going to add this just locally, like just in the areas that we want it. Um, and this is going to be really good for uh, the areas that we don't want the eye to really go. I, the eye will go there, but it's not like it's, it's going to take away some of the detail. So um, I'm going to invert our mask and then just paint it in kind of in the top part of our frame here by painting in white. And as I do that, you can see it really softens the detail in those trees and emphasizes the fog that's already there. Something like this. As I turn that off and on, you can see that glow that it adds in there. And the trick with anything like this is you want to be subtle with it. Um, one more thing that I really I think that will work really well on this particular shot is there's a filter called foliage and we'll you try that for this one. So and what that's going to do is it's going to increase the brightness and the saturation in the foliage to emphasize it. So if we click on uh, foliage here, you can see, whoa, that's really yellow. But then if we go down to one of the green, the green ones, ah, yes, that looks more like what we're doing. And then we can change the amount. So we're only going to use this in certain parts. 
and we're going to use it subtly, not as heavy handed as we have here. So we'll hit, click OK on that and then we'll just paint in a little bit. So I'm going to invert a mask, apply it there. Now I'm just going to paint a little bit and I'm going to use this like dodging where I'm basically just going to uh, brighten just some of the moss here on the parts that I would like the eye to go. And as I do that, we start to get that nice mossy color here. I felt it was too much when it was up here because the, there's a little bit of light hitting it. So I'm going to use it to kind of bring out some of them that uh, some of the moss areas that were a little bit more subtle. Something like that. Okay, and that's it. And just in a few uh, a few layers, we went from that to this using Nick, uh, the Nick collection. All right, hopefully this has been useful. Go out and grab this. It's a very useful uh, useful set of plugins, and for the price, you cannot beat it. Free is always a great price for something as powerful as these Nick plugins. All right, thanks so much. Like, subscribe, share, and we will see you in the next video. Bye bye.